Hey guys, it's Mr. G, and in this video, I'm going to go over Unit 4, Lab 3, Page 3. And I'm going to make this video public because I'm not going to show you guys the snap code with the answers. I'm just going to walk you through my thought process of how I'm going to go about, or how I would go about, solving this, um, these, these challenges, or the for you to do. I'll also go over the take it further, and kind of give you guys an idea of what you could use to solve those problems, without actually giving you guys the answer. So hopefully teachers don't go crazy about this and everyone learns something from this. With this lab, they're kind of going over Unicode for the first time, or Unicode. Um, and it's basically a, a number representation for every character in your, on your keyboard or every character that could be used in a specific language, let's say. So in English, we use, for uppercase A through Z, we use 65 through 90 in Unicode. So they're just numbers that represent letters. And for lowercase a through z, we use 97 through 122. So for example, if you give your computer or you tell your computer that you're going to use Unicode and you're going to put the number 97, the computer knows that you're looking at lowercase a. Now we could use this. So I'm going to show you guys over here on the right side where it says hello world. I'm going to show you how to encode your letters in Unicode. So I first have to encode the capital H, which is, let's see, it's right over here, 72. Then I can encode the letter E, which is lowercase, and that is 101. L is going to be, lowercase L is going to be 108. So these two are both going to be 108. And since I'm running out of room, I have to kind of like lower it and bring it down a little bit. O, and it's going to be lowercase, is going to be 111. And the space, let's see, what is the space? Do we have a value for space over here? Oh, yep, there it is, 32. So this space, you can't forget the space, is going to be 32. It has its own Unicode value. Uh, the W, the lowercase w in world, is going to be 119. The lowercase o, as we saw before, is still 111. R is going to be 114. L is going to be 108 again. And D is going to be 100. So these are my Unicode values. All of these that I've written down over here are my Unicode values for these letters. So if I feed the computer 72, 101, 108, 108, 111, 32, it knows that it can write out, it can spell out hello with a space and then world. So we're going to use blocks in Snap, the Unicode of block and the Unicode as letter blocks to be able to go back and forth between Unicode and actual letters that we're used to. What you can do is, if you have a word or something that you want to encode, you can take the Unicode value of these. So for example, if I want to change hello world into something else, okay, I can do a shift cipher. And what I can do is I can shift the Unicode by a certain number. So let's say instead of uh, capital H is 72, I can easily shift the number 72. I just add, let's say, 5, and it's going to be 72 plus 5 is going to be 77. And if you look over here at the charts, 77 is going to be capital M. So I can take these numbers of un in Unicode, and I can add a shift uh, a key basically, I could add a specific number to the Unicode value of it and I will end up with a secret like message. Now in the lab I think they gave you guys the invasion of Normandy is on June 6, 1944 and then it shows you guys what it looks like in Unicode but you'll notice that it does not have all letters. It has like ca other characters like uh, dollar signs, it has like the curly braces, it has an equals, um, it has a colon. So it doesn't come out to just letters if you use Unicode, because as you'll see, if you look over here, 
Um, let's say I have z, lowercase z, and I, let's say the shift was 1. Now, normally, lowercase z, if you shift it 1 to the right, it should be letter a, or lowercase a. But with Unicode, if you shift z by 1, so it becomes 123 from 122, you end up with the opening curly brace, or the left brace. Um, and that might not be something you want, if you want to just your if you want to have your encoding as all letters, so just to give you guys a little bit of a hint, what you might want to do is make sure that the Z wraps around. So the one twenty two, if you want it to be letter A, if you shift one, you might want it to wrap around. And I'll show you guys the math for that maybe a little bit later or in a second video, depending on how long this video runs. All right, so let's see what else they ask us to do. So we, on paper, use the shift cipher to encrypt and decrypt a short message. So if I have a whole bunch of numbers here that represent Unicode values, let's say I have, I don't know, 106, 113, 113, and 116. So if I have these Unicode values down here, I know that I shifted hello five places. And so I'm going to end up with a whole bunch of like, you know, a jarbled up mess here. That's going to be hard to read. Anyways, the next thing we want to do is develop an algorithm for this, for this procedure um, so that it can work with any input and shift any value. So you want to, you're going to want to create your algorithm to take in a shift, a shift value. Um, and that shift value could be like the person could enter the positive or the negative so that you can go back and forth between Unicode and um, back and forth between the letters, uh, between encoding and decoding. And you're also going to want to make sure that, let's see, that you get the Unicode value before you do any shift. Okay, so make sure for each letter, for each letter, you're going to want to shift it, but you want to, you're going to want to shift its Unicode value by the shift value that was inputted in the block, basically. And I'll probably show you guys what the, what the block can look like, but I'm not going to show you guys the code inside. That's for you guys to figure out. Although if you want, you could like, you know, post in the comments and say something and I'll, I'll kind of give you guys more feedback if you want that, if you want on that. Anyways, moving on, you can test this with your partner and you guys can uh, encrypt the secret message and decrypt it and see if it works. So your encrypted message is going to have like a whole bunch of characters probably that aren't letters, but that's okay. You've done the for you to do part correctly. Now for the take it further, it says to implement a version of the Caesar cipher that not only shifts the characters, but also wraps them around the alphabet. And when the, when the end of the alphabet is reached, you may wish to restrict, restrict your alphabet to the set of printable characters given above on the Unicode table. So I think what they're trying to say is that you want to take any characters that aren't letters and you want to make sure that they become letters. So I'm actually going to save that for the next video and I'm just going to put this one out there to see, um, see if any of you guys are working on this or, you know, if you post in the comments below like how your teachers are grading this or like what the project or what like the assignment is, that would be pretty helpful for me to be able to tell you guys or to produce better videos. So um, I'll see you in the next one.